Odom presented at the recent Bitcoin Investors Conference in Las Vegas and spoke about a Bitcoin improvement proposal, namely BIP47, which he says would make blockchain analysis companies obsolete. The BIP creates what Chris calls a payment code, and this payment code functions very much like a stealth address. And I remember I was so excited when Dark Wallet was developing stealth addresses, but for whatever reason, they never took off. So individual payment codes could be given out to individuals with whom you do business and your entire transaction history with that person would not be viewable to anybody else. Whereas Bitcoin as it is today, if you were using the same address with that person every time, yes, your entire history with them would be open to the world. And so BIP47 would significantly increase privacy within Bitcoin and it was lauded today by Andreas Antonopoulos on Twitter. In our preparations to launch the dailydecrypt.com, we realized that we needed a payment solution and have just found an insanely useful one called Mycelium Gear. We like it so much that we've made this tutorial to show you how you can use Mycelium Gear to accept Bitcoin tips or donations, or even sell goods and services all from your own website. Follow these three steps to get Mycelium Gear working on your website. Step one, go to gear.mycelium.com. Sign up for a Gear account. Enter your email address, choose and confirm a password, and enter your name or the name of your site or a pseudonym or whatever. You'll now be sent a confirmation email, so check it and click the link to continue. Now that you've clicked the link, you can log into your new Mycelium Gear account. You'll be prompted to download either a Mycelium wallet or an Electrum wallet. In this video, we'll choose the Mycelium wallet option. Go to your phone's app store and download Mycelium. After opening it, click the Accounts tab. We're now going to make a backup of your wallet. You'll see that Account 1 says Missing Backup. Tap it and tell it you want to make a backup. It will now give you 12 words one at a time, and you should write them down. You'll then re-enter these words, which will verify that your backup is accurate. These 12 words represent the private key, or spending key, to your wallet, so you should keep them secret and in a safe place. You are the bank, after all. Now step two, we're going to retrieve your wallet's master public key. You don't have to know what that means for this to work. Tap the top right button again, and this time click Export. The next page shows your master public key, which is that long string of words and letters. Copy it. And step three, head back to your Mycelium Gear account. Select the kind of backend your website uses, like WordPress or Joomla or something custom that you control. Give your widget a name, like donations or t-shirts or whatever you're using it for. Enter the URL of the web page where you want your widget to appear, and then paste that big long string of letters and numbers, your master public key, into the field marked BIP32 pub key. If you like, you can check the box at the bottom of the page, which means you'll receive notification emails every time you get a new payment. Click Next. And here, you can tell Mycelium Gear what you want your widget to look like. Say you're selling Acme t-shirts. Say so here and list their price. You can add custom fields for things like color, size, and shipping address. Your widget can be gray, black, or red, and when it looks like what you want, save it. And that's it. Your new widget's code is listed right below. Copy it and paste it right into your website's backend, and bada boom. All payments sent through your new Mycelium Gear widget will go straight to your Bitcoin wallet, and each of the payments will go to a different address within your wallet. This means that you can easily track your payments and preserve your financial privacy. We want to say thanks to the cool folks at Mycelium Gear who released this software free for everybody to use. We're looking forward to using it on the dailydecrypt.com when it launches. A competing client to Bitcoin Core, much the way Bitcoin XT is a competing client, is being offered by an organization calling itself Bitcoin Unlimited. Bitcoin Unlimited has gone above and beyond in that they have published their Articles of Federation, which outline the decision-making system and administrative hierarchy for the client. And I think that competing implementation clients for the same blockchains are very cool because they are proving a major point, which is that it is not governance or government that is a problem in the world per se, but rather it is the monopoly on governance, which causes problems. And competing clients like this also just go to show that Bitcoin... <laughs> I, I, was, I was called an anti-government neckbeard Bitcoin lover on Reddit once. Me, a neckbeard. 
And it's just so cool that cryptocurrency is proving that of course governance is needed. How else can decisions get made? But it's showing that governance models should have to compete with one another, and participation in any given governance model can and should be voluntary.
Y la parte del juego consiste en lo siguiente. And the game part uh, consists in the following. Explicas a la gente, mira, esta es la cla clave privada, que es la clave secreta. You explain to the people, look, this is the private key, which must be secret. And uh, you have it and uh, me. And uh, explicas, esa persona y yo mismo la tiene. Y antes pensaba en cinco años, pero luego cambié un poco de idea de hasta cuatro años. First I thought of five years, but then I changed uh, my opinion to four years. Later explain. Después lo expli explico por qué. Les dices, mira, tienes cuatro años para poner esta cantidad de Bitcoin a otra dirección. Si no lo, lo has quitado después de cuatro años, yo lo quito. So you explain them, you have four years to take this Bitcoin out of this direction, of this secret uh, key direction. If uh, you don't do it, uh, I do it after these four years. So you lose this. That's the, this part of the game. It's uh, la parte del juego. He creado este hashtag uh, BTC4 para hacerlo un poco popular. I created this hashtag BTC4 to make it a little popular. Antes pensaba en cinco años, pero luego cambié a cuatro porque te has dado cuenta que en los Simpsons la gente tiene cuatro dedos. Y Solo do, Dios tiene cinco dedos. Um, first, I thought of five years, but then I changed my mind to four years. Um, did you notice that in The Simpsons, people have four fingers and only God has five fingers. Uh, I'll show some pictures. Voy a enseñar algunas imágenes de los Simpsons. De los manos y dedos de Simpsons. Some pictures of the hands and fingers of Simpsons. Uh, pero antes quiero recordar que um, es muy probable que en también cuatro o cinco en los próximos años el valor de Bitcoin puede subir mucho. Just want to remember before that uh, the price of Bitcoin, the value of Bitcoin can rise very much in these next years. Así que si solo pones una cantidad pequeña más tarde, Puede ser de gran ayuda. Even if you just put a little small amount later, it can be big help. Uh, no solo para... Bueno, es un juego. <laughs> si la persona lo quita antes de cuatro años, para, es para esta persona. Si no, es para ti. Si te recuerdas y guardas bien la llave privada. So uh, it's, this is the game part, if uh, the, the person takes the money out, it's for that person, but if they forget it after these four years, you can take it out, and it can be really... <laughs> bueno, imprimir también la llave pública y la llave privada, y si por ejemplo, okay, first translate. Print and not just the private key, but on also the public key. Así que si, por ejemplo, explicas a la gente, 
Mira, si alguna persona quiere enviarte Bitcoin, pero tú no tienes ninguna dirección, así que puedes dar este, esta llave pública a la persona. Mira, muy bien, la llave pública, no la llave secreta, das a esa persona o cualquier persona y te pueden enviar Bitcoin a esa dirección. So, remember, uh, the public key you can give to anybody and if somebody wants to send you some bitcoin and you and this person doesn't have, have any so you have already this public address where they can send you bitcoin ¿Qué es bitcoin? Bitcoin es la primera moneda digital descentralizada. Los bitcoins son monedas digitales que puedes enviar a través de internet. Comparado con otras alternativas, Bitcoin tiene numerosas ventajas. Los Bitcoins son transferidos directamente de persona a persona a través de la red sin pasar por un banco u otro intermediario. Esto significa que las comisiones son mucho menores, puedes usarlo en cualquier país, tu cuenta no puede ser congelada y no hay prerequisitos o límites arbitrarios. Miremos cómo funciona. Los Bitcoins son generados en todo Internet por cualquiera con un programa gratuito llamado Minero de Bitcoin. Crear Bitcoins requiere una cierta cantidad de trabajo para cada bloque de monedas. Esta cantidad se ajusta automáticamente por la red, para que los Bitcoins siempre sean creados a un ratio predecible y limitado. Tus Bitcoins se guardan en tu billetera digital, que te resultará familiar si usas banca digital. Cuando transfieres Bitcoins, una firma electrónica es añadida. Pasados unos minutos, la transacción es verificada por el minero y es almacenada permanente y anónimamente por la red. El software de Bitcoin es completamente abierto y cualquiera puede revisar el código. Bitcoin está cambiando las finanzas de la misma manera que la web ha cambiado el periodismo. Cuando cualquiera tiene acceso al mercado global, florecen grandes ideas. Miremos algunos ejemplos de cómo los Bitcoins están usándose hoy en día. Puedes comprar videojuegos, regalos, libros, servidores y calcetines de alpaca. Existen varias casas de cambio donde puedes intercambiar tus bitcoins por dólares, euros y más. Los bitcoins son una gran forma para que pequeños negocios y autónomos reciban publicidad. No cuesta nada empezar a aceptarlos, no hay cargos o comisiones y recibirás negocio adicional de la economía bitcoin. Para tus primeros bitcoins y más información visita weusecoins.com When I first heard this flat earth subject, I dismissed it without even giving it a second thought. But more recently, at the beginning of 2015, I ran across a few flat earth videos again. And while looking into the fake moon photos circulating around, I saw that people were claiming that the images from earth from space were fake as well. Pretty soon the flat earth subject became viral online. And after looking at the Apollo missions one night and coming to the conclusion that they were nothing more than a huge con game, it jarred my memory about something. And for a very specific reason, I decided to look deeply into the flat earth without just dismissing it blindly as so many do. Why did I look into it this time? Well, I do pray for knowledge and wisdom and discernment, but maybe the recent Apollo footage I watched helped. However, I live near a very large lake, Lake Ontario, and I happen to remember going to the beach as a kid and looking across the lake and seeing New York State coast off in the distance. I never ever thought anything about it ever, except I remember it being there when I went to the beach. Now, I've been to that beach a hundred times over the years, And once this topic gained more prominence in early 2015, the first video I saw explained the curvature of the Earth and what it's supposed to be in inches per mile. And it resonated with me because I remember that I could see clear across the lake to the other coast, something that broke all the sphere Earth rules. So with NASA fakery on my mind and the memory of seeing this coastline that supposedly was too far below the horizon for me to be able to see it due to the curvature of the Earth, I re-examined the Flat Earth Theory. And as unbelievable as it seemed, it started to make a lot of sense, especially since I did distinctly remember being able to see that far coast basically any time I was at my local beach. And as I've said, I've been there hundreds of times over the years. But even so, I went back to the beach recently and stood at the shore. I looked south and guess what? I could see the New York State coastline just like I remember. Now I googled the distance and it was approximately 36 miles. I learned what the curvature of the Earth is supposed to be exactly at that distance. And according to the people that believe in the sphere, and I found out that the coast should have been buried below my ability to see it by almost 900 feet. That part of the New York State coast had a top elevation of less than 300 feet. So that left at least a huge 600 foot discrepancy. And even more because I could see some of the height of the far shore. Was something really wrong with the reality that they've been selling us ever since we were born? 
Well, I ended up becoming a little fixated on proving or disproving the concept. And at first, I truly thought disproving the flat Earth would be rather easy. I thought there had to be a reasonable explanation why I could see so far beyond the so-called curved barrier. I learned about light refraction and superior mirages. I learned about perspective and horizons. I learned about how our eyes work. I viewed dozens of similar experiences on YouTube. I listened to experts and people who thought they had logical but spherical explanations. In fact, I tried for a few months to debunk the concept. I just couldn't. The more I looked into it, the more sense it made, and the less likely that the sphere model we've been spoon-fed since birth was a reality. It's just flat out wrong. And as more people shared their experiences and proofs online, it only added to my growing, pretty much unwavering belief that the world is not what we've been told. And learning about how our eyes work and how perspective work helps a lot with understanding sunrises and sunsets and ships disappearing hull first at sea and other supposed sphere earth proofs. I can't say for certain what shape the earth is or how big it is, or if there's an Antarctic ring or a barrier beyond it, or if it's an infinite plane. Maybe everything we theorize is not complete. There are so many possibilities that it blows the mind. And the flat earth has no real complete standard model because it's all based on us finding out things for ourselves. We agree on the facts and certain basics, but the rest is only hypothetical even if it seemingly makes sense. And as the evidence mounts for both the flat earth and against the sphere, I wanted to create a special place where folks can learn and share what they've learned with other supporters. Differences of opinion are certainly going to come forth and should be expressed openly. But remember that the goal of my videos and their corresponding threads is to provide the opportunity to use each of us to learn and grow in any area that any of us has a problem in. If there is a thing you can't understand, then ask. Someone will have an opinion and we can go from there. If you have a point to make against what is considered an accepted flat earth fact, please provide any relevant links or supporting proofs or videos. I am currently under the impression that the entire space program, even low Earth orbit, and all that is there, is really just a sleight of hand trick by a group of illusionists that have swindled the public, the governments of the world, the media, and us into believing a lie. Everybody, a small group of corporations and cabals have almost complete control over the entire financial, educational, high-level governmental and media systems, leaving it up to real armchair scientists and normal people that can critically think and recreate experiments themselves to independently prove or disprove prove any accepted line of thought about our reality. Look, I ain't the smartest man on the flat earth, but I ain't no dummy. I'm educated, and I never ever questioned or ever thought of an alternative to a sphere earth until this year. It never entered my mind to question this part of our reality at all, ever. But now I question everything. I'm a Christian, and I think I see the big picture. Thanks, Thanks for watching my video. If you'd like to see more proof against the heliocentric model, and proof against the sphere, then make sure to subscribe to my channel. And if there's anything you disagree with, Make sure you leave a note below explaining exactly why. Remember, folks, follow the golden rule. God loves you. We'll talk soon. Bueno, ahora voy a enseñar algunas imágenes de los dedos de Simpsons. Now I'll show you some pictures of the fingers of Simpson. The four fingers, los cuatro dedos y cinco dedos de Dios. The four fingers and five fingers of God of Simpson. Thirteenth of March. Normalmente produzco solo vídeos en inglés y español.
produce only videos in English and Spanish. Normalerweise produziere ich nur Videos in English und Spanisch. Pero hoy voy a hacer otra excepción y traducirlo también en alemán. But today I make another exception and translate it into German too. Aber heute werde ich nochmal eine Ausnahme machen und es auch in Deutsch übersetzen. Ya algunas semanas tengo escrito en mi lista de tareas por hacer de traducir el video hashtag BTC4. Now already some weeks ago I have written on my to-do list to translate the video BTC4, hashtag BTC4. Schon seit ein paar Wochen habe ich äh, auf meiner To-Do-Liste geschrieben, ähm, den Video BTC4 in Deutsch zu übersetzen. Estoy segura que esta idea puede ayudar a mucha gente económicamente. I'm sure that this can help many people economically. Ich bin sicher, dass diese Idee vielen Leuten äh, finanziell helfen kann. Y da motivación para aprender Bitcoin. And give motivation to learn about Bitcoin. Und motivation geben, um über Bitcoin zu lernen. En este momento el precio de Bitcoin es muy bajo, económico. At the moment the price of Bitcoin is very low, economic. Im moment is the price of Bitcoin sehr tief. Sería el momento ideal para invertir. Hoy es el 15 de abril 2015. Would be the ideal moment to invest. Today is April 15th, 2015. Es wäre der ideale Moment zu investieren. Heute ist der 15. April 2015. El 27 de marzo 2015 he publicado en mi canal de YouTube Vanos Enigma el primer video sobre hashtag BTC4 explicando cómo me vino esta idea. On March 27th of 2015, um, I published my fir the first video about hashtag BTC4 in my channel YouTube Vanos Enigma, e explaining how I got the idea. Am 27. März 2015 habe ich in meinem YouTube-Channel Vanos Enigma den ersten, den ersten Video über Hashtag BTC4 veröffentlicht und äh, erzählt, erklärt, wie ich diese Idee bekommen habe. La idea consiste principalmente en lo siguiente. The idea mainly consists in the following. Die idea besteht hauptsächlich en folgenden, folgenden. Imprimir en direcciones de Bitcoin en papel. Diez o mínimo diez o mejor cien. To print Bitcoin directions in paper, at least 10 or better 100. 
Bitcoin-Adressen in Papier ausdrucken, ähm, wenn ich mal 10 oder besser gleich 100, y luego poner en cada dirección de Bitcoin una pequeña cantidad de Bitcoin. And then put in every Bitcoin direction a little amount of Bitcoin. Und dann in jede Bitcoin Adresse eine kleine Summe von Bitcoin transferieren. Y la próxima vez, cuando otra vez ves una persona por la calle pidiendo dinero. And the next time you see again a person begging for money on the street. Und das nächste Mal, wenn du wieder eine Person auf der Straße betteln siehst. Y para tus amigos y amigas, and for your friends, of course, und für deine Freunde natürlich, o tal vez eh, de propina en un restaurante, or maybe a tip in a restaurant, oder trinkgeld im restaurant, bueno, a la hora de imprimir también, Copiar y guardar las llaves privadas de Bitcoin, de direcciones de Bitcoin. Or when you print the Bitcoin addresses, um, copy and save the private keys of the Bitcoin addresses, of course. Wenn man die Bitcoin Adressen druckt, auch die uh, auch die privaten Schlüssel, Bitcoin Address Schlüsseln, ähm, kopieren und speichern. Y a la hora de distribuir las direcciones de Bitcoin, escribir la fecha, por ejemplo, hoy es el 15 de abril 2015. Escribir la fecha más plus cuatro años, uh, igual 15 de abril 2019. And then in the moment when you distribute uh, the Bitcoin addresses, you write the date, for example, today, April 15th, 2015, plus, plus, Four years uh, is April 15th, 2019. Und dann in dem Moment, wenn man die Bitcoin-Adressen verteilt, auf das Papier schreiben, das heutige Datum, zum Beispiel 15. April 2015, plus vier Jahre, ist gleich 15.04.2019. Luego vas a explicar a la gente, mira, esta es la llave privada. Tú y yo la tengo, la tienes. Si no quitas, transfieres este dinero de Bitcoin, eh, en estos cuatro años yo lo vuelvo a tener, tener o sacar. Then you explain to the people, look, this is the private key. I have it and you have it. If you don't take this money, Bitcoin, out of this account, I will take it out in, this, um, in these four years, at the end of these four years. And then erklärst du den Leuten, ciao, das ist der private Schlüssel. Um, ich und du haben diesen privaten Schlüssel, Bitcoin Schlüssel. Wenn du äh, bis Ende dieser vier Jahre das Geld Bitcoin nicht raus tust, transfer, äh, dann hole ich es zurück. De esta forma das más motivación a la gente para empezar a aprender cómo funciona Bitcoin. 
this way you give more motivation to the people to learn how the technology of Bitcoin functions. Auf diese Weise gibst du mehr Motivation den Leuten zu lernen, wie die Technologie von Bitcoin funktioniert. In mi video antigen